the Department of Chemical Engineering at the University of South Carolina. Recently established two smart state centers. One is called SAGE, which is the strategic approach to the generation of electricity. And that's uh, headed by Professor Jochen Lauterbach. And the Catalyst for Renewable Fuel Center, they are trying to develop new catalysts, new synthesis methods, new materials that allow them to convert biomass to usable fuels. The SAGE Center is a collaboration between the state of South Carolina and industrial collaborators. The key mission of our center is to find new technologies to make electricity production more environmentally friendly. About three years ago, the U.S. military approached us to look into a new source of fuel for unmanned drones. Unmanned drones typically run off batteries and their flight time is about two to three hours. If we run those drones off solid oxide fuel cells, we can extend the flight time of the drones to eight to 10 hours. In some cases, they have shown up to 24 hours. Those solid oxide fuel cells run off a mix that is very close to liquefied petroleum gas. Everything the US military runs in the field runs off JP-8, NATO jet fuel and they approached us to develop new catalysts to take the JP-8 that they have in the field to liquefy petroleum gas, which they can then use to power drones. We have a special approach here in the center where we use high throughput screening for catalytic materials. We screen multiple catalysts at the same time, so we can look at 16 or 32 materials in the same time everybody else would look at a single material. We started by looking at some of the more conventional materials. We then took a quantum leap by looking into materials that we would not think would actually work for this particular problem. Those are new nanomaterials that we synthesize here in the center, and those materials work much better. In fact, right now we're exceeding the targets of the military by about a factor of 10. The catalyst is currently in the process of being optimized, scaled up, and being commercialized. This will have a large impact on surveillance missions, but it will also have large impacts on civil applications. Just imagine having a drone that flies over a forest fire. The firefighters can actually survey the forest fire. What we aim to do in SAGE is to change the complexion of energy research. My work is in high temperature coating materials. The idea is that materials aren't dormant, they're alive. They react dynamically to their environment. They take on oxygen, they release oxygen, they expand, they contract, they affect things around them. This idea of oxidation-resistant materials comes down to most catalytic processes, and in fact, how we generate electricity, or how a plane flies, relies on combustion at very high temperatures. In the presence of moisture, the moisture oxidizes these materials, and in catalysis, once the surface of your catalyst is oxidized, it's dead. What if we could control how nanomaterials are grown? What if we could control them on such a scale so that we could promote, instead of the oxidation of the material, a material that self-heals? What we've demonstrated is that we can take cobalt nanomaterials, and if we grow them with a particular morphology, we can put forward the appropriate facet that promotes the reverse reaction. So instead of having the catalyst continuously oxidize, what we see is the material starts to oxidize and then in the Fischer-Tropsch process, reverses and goes back to being just metal. The key mission of the Center of Catalysis for Renewable Fuels is to replace imported oil with either biomass converted biofuels or solar fuels. We're currently uh, importing about half of the petroleum that we use, mostly for transportation fuels, and it's costing us over a billion dollars a day, over a trillion dollars a year that's added to our, our trade deficit. We have two main scientific foci right now, the first of which is catalysis for renewable fuels, and we particularly specialize in catalyst synthesis. How do you prepare uh, a good catalyst to convert biomass into biofuel? We think we can greatly improve the processes for biomass conversion or, or solar fuels by scientifically synthesizing our catalysts to have two metals next to each other. The impact of our work on society is really huge. It impacts the energy industry, it impacts the chemical industry, pharmaceutical industry. Perhaps the most exciting results that have come about from the center recently are Dr. Yu's results in his membrane separations. He's, he's been able to achieve a quantum leap forward 
I'm actually calling it a new era in nano separations with the materials he's developing. And they'll have a whole a host of applications. Currently, we are using graphene oxide uh, for making very thin membranes, like down to 2 nanometer. And then we can use the defects, like structural defects on graphene oxide, to separate very tiny molecules from larger molecules. For example, we can separate hydrogen from CO2. And their size difference is less than 0.1 nanometer. And then from that point, we can start to generate larger pores. Then we can separate different molecules, larger molecules like water. And we can do the desalination to squeeze the water out of salt water. Then we can get drinking water from it. I think that's a revolutionary technology. And, and I think I'm the first one to use this graphene to make, make large area out of thin membranes for separation applications. The purpose of the Centers of Economic Excellence is not just to create IP through peer-reviewed journals. The idea is to create jobs, to create new ideas that we can then take and make actual tangible products out of. That is absolutely where chemical engineering and both of the smart state chairs are going, to create a knowledge-based economy in South Carolina.